but it has a congregation to me just as we pray. Most righteous Father, who is heaven, truly God, we are grateful for this opportunity to be here once more to your court, to give you thanks and praise. And I pray this afternoon, Father, that you forgive us for sin, where we have fallen and come short. Lord, we ask that you, God, go to our transgression, wash us in our hearts as we come this afternoon. Father, I ask that you will wash me in and out, so that as I petition your throne on behalf of your children this afternoon, that you will cleanse me, purge me, and lead me by this way. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfect. He would. I want to live forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cross out to the pool, now wash me in that to be my children. So, most righteous Father, we place our dear sister Monica Gay before you this time. Lord, he has a few that will visit her this moment in a special way. As a few, Lord, that you will stretch for your hands and keep her special anointing from home. Lord, we ask that you will please our family. We ask for that you will spread them and say, keep close to her, Father. Lord, we ask that you will be known to rest of those who are sick at home and this at all. We ask for that you will want to let your healing be according to your will and let your will be done. Father, we want to place this church before you in a special way. There is the leadership of just a church in your hand this moment. Lord, we ask that you help us to be united to the church. Help us to pray for one another and help us to be our brothers and sisters keeper as we go from them to day. Father, we place the children before you at this time in a special way. They are the one who are in charge of today's service. Lord, we ask a few that you anoint them from the bottom of their head to the sole of their feet. And I pray, Lord, that you be with them in a special way. By the one place, one of us told them to spread the bread of life on us today. Ask a few Lord that you may have your bad request. Whatever you have for us today, Lord, I pray that you do not fall on the fears, that you will take a page from whatever she has to say on us today. Pray, Lord, that you come to our night time from the bottom of her head up to the sole of her feet. Be has Lord, that you come to the strength of her as she go from there today. But we place the waiting for creation before you at this time. For we ask that you lead us. Grant our first your peace, your love. We want to thank you, Lord, for your health and strength. Thank you for food, shelter, and clothing. Thank you, Lord, for your parents, neighbors, and friends. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and your sacred life for us, so that we can have life and have you more abundantly. Build us as we go to the rest of this day's service. Want to bless us and keep us. We those who have lost our ones, comfort them, Lord, provide for them, so that they can put their loved ones to rest. Continue with us now and go to war. What we may have asked of you this afternoon, Lord, may not go to God to us, calling to which is equally in Jesus' name and pray. Amen.
The city is square. Let us turn our Bibles to Revelation 21, verses 17 to 21. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like the unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprase, the eleventh a jasmine. The twelfth and amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it is were jasper and glass. I surely don't want to miss out on that of on this beautiful city. The New Jerusalem. And as you read further down, the text continues to explain how beautiful the city will be. St. John 14, verses 1 to 3 reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye be also. In this life that we are now living in, so hard and heartbreaking. At times we face some circumstances in our life and we feel like giving up. But St. John 40 reminds us that not your hearts be troubled. But in order not to let our hearts be troubled, we must read God's words and that is the Bible. Because in it we find all promises Christ gave to us. In my church? Amen. Amen. The Christian journey may seem very hard, but we must remember that Jesus would have walked this journey before us and set an example for us to follow. Mm -hmm. When Christ was on this earth, he felt pain, hunger, temptations, and everything that we face today. Because he was human, but as much as Jesus was human and this with these we all face with today. He gained victory over sin. Jesus was perfect. Not even a sinful thought was found in him. And so we as children of God must get victory over sin in order to make it into the new Jerusalem. I have often heard Christians say, no one is perfect. But Matthew 5 verse 48 tells us, stand ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, to us, what of sin can be found in us? The Bible is God's written word, and it is here to guide us through this long journey. When we read God's words, we find comfort and joy, because in it we find all the promises to comfort our hearts, and we also find all the examples we should follow to gain victory over sin. Mm -hmm. This world is full of sorrows, pain, and heartache. Our love is life's journey. We would have lost some of our closest family members, our friends, and we may feel as if we want, we can't go on. And that our work has come to an end. But when we read our Bible, the Lord makes it clear that in the New Jerusalem, all these pain and tears will come to an end. He promises us, is, us in Revelation 21, verse 4, and God shall wipe away all tears their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yeah. But before we can enjoy the beauty of the new Jerusalem, God's people must gain victory over sin. Yeah. And some of us must come through great tribulation. Yeah. When Jesus was on this earth, they have done him the, him the very same. They accused him, tried him, and then crucified him. And as 
as we are now living in the last days of Earth's history, all these things will be repeated. As long as we live for Jesus, we will be persecuted. St. Matthew 24, verse 9 tells us, Then shall they deliver you up to the afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Yes, brethren, the time is coming, and we are almost here. The disciples would have asked the question, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Jesus' first answer was, Take you that no man deceive you. Mm. How can we not be deceived by brothers and sisters? By reading and believing God's word. Mm. Jesus told his disciples all that will take place in the last days. Matthew 24, verse 7 reads, For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We see famines taking place in our world. We see pestilence taking place, for example, the coronavirus. We feel and hear about earthquakes in different countries and places. But all these are the beginning of sorrows. See that we be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Amen. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Jesus did endure at the end. He died for you and died redemption, so that through him we might be saved and have everlasting life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we must walk in Christ's footsteps as we must come to the realization that we are living in the last days. And so our test is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. But if we hold on to our Heavenly Father, we will make it. As I go back to John 4, 14, verses 1 to 3, let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Jesus pro promised he is God born, gone to prepare a place for us, that where he is one day, very soon we will be with him. Don't you want to be with your brethren? Some of us may die before the time of test comes upon us. But if we die in Christ, we have nothing to fear. Amen. Romans 6 verse 23 tells us, For the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. And if we live to go through the great time of trouble, let it be heard. These are they which came up out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 17 verse 14. Yeah. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, with, whither whosoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God as to the Lamb. Revelation 14, verse 3 to 4. Let us continue to live for Jesus Christ. Let us continue to follow in his footsteps. John the Revelator would have caught a glimpse of the New Jerusalem and how he described it. I really don't want to miss out on the beauty of heaven. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Romans 12, verse 2 reads, And be not conformed to this world, but by be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And 1 Peter 2, verse 9 reminds us, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should assure forth the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. We are in this world to bring light to those who are still in darkness, meaning those who are sinking in sin. 1 John 2, verses 15 to 17 tells us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Mm. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, 
but see that joy the will of God abandoned forever. Amen. One day this corruptible world will come to an end. This world is not our home. One day we will attend Satan and his fallen angels' funeral. Mm. But we have to remain faithful until the end. We have to continue to walk in the straight and narrow path that leads us to everlasting life. Because the brown way will, will only lead us to destruction. <clears throat> the Lord is right now pleading on our behalf in the heavenly sanctuary for our sins. Mm -hmm. And I will ask the question, how shall we stand in that great day? Mm -hmm. Shall we be found before him wanting to with our sins or wash away? Mm -hmm. We don't know when our name will be called up in heaven, so we have to live for Christ every day. Amen. We have to live perfectly, like as if it's our last day. Mm -hmm. And we really want to make it into a new Jerusalem. Sister White would have written in the book Desire Faith is that Adam and Eve will take their cross and place them at Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. It will be a glorious time of gratitude for what Christ has done for us. We will never cease to thank him for his life and for his love for each and one of us. Mm -hmm. And I am going to do my best to make it in. And I want to see you all there. May God bless you. Amen, church? Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time, Amen. enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. I want to thank Sister Sarah Kendall for the every way she would allow the Lord to use her to present to us today's word. May God continue to bless you as you continue to work for the Lord. Let us stand and take our inhale in hand for our closing in, which is taken from in 626 in a little while.
this Holy Sabbath day, Lord. Yeah. We are thanking you for being here with all of us today, Lord. And as we are going home, Lord, please bless us in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Let the church. Oh, yeah.